We now move on to the first inaugural keynote session of the day. Uh, Microsoft has been a partner of PMI in all of their previous conferences and also the platinum sponsor for this year. In all of the uncertain times, one thing we are certain of is always support from Microsoft in all our conferences. So I'll start by thanking Microsoft for that. The next, next reason for you to clap is the person who is coming up to speak is a person from the NCR region. <laughs> Here is a person with over 35 years of experience in the Indian IT industry, uh, has been uh, the alumni of IIT Kanpur and Stanford University, a uh, member at uh, CII and MAIT, currently the member of Executive Council of NASCOM, uh, has earlier uh, had leadership roles in Sun Microsystems India and abroad, uh, uh, managing director at Oracle India, and currently is the chairman of Microsoft Corporation in India. In his current role, Bhaskar Pramanik is responsible for the entire sales and marketing and providing overall uh, leadership to Microsoft India and its strategies. Sir, it's a great pleasure to have you here. In his vast experience in 35 years, he would have seen a lot of changes in the IT industry and obviously dealt with a lot of uncertainties and he's going to share his views on that. Outside of his work, he's interested in photography, reading, and currently working on removing uncertainties from his golf game. So it's a pleasure to invite you here. So I've uh, just been told that there is a timer and unfortunately, since I'm not part of the PMI community, this is going to be something which I'm going to find very difficult to, to meet. Um, it's difficult for me to watch the time and speak at the same time. But first of all, good morning. And um, I just want to tell you I'm so terribly impressed with um, what I've seen so far, what I've heard so far. I have never yet seen such a disciplined audience. I've never yet seen an audience who comes to Gurgaon <laughs> sharp at 9 a.m. or 9.30 a.m. and are seated and are also having a great time. So thank you very much. And I think, you know, I perhaps need to get uh, some of you uh, uh, a lot better. Uh, you know, you really seem to be adding a lot of value in what you do. I really want to thank the board of PMI for inviting me. I hope that they invited me not because we're the uh, platinum sponsor, but perhaps because I've got something of value to add. Um, <clears throat> so first of all, I had a tough time trying to figure out what should I talk to you about. Because while I manage uncertainty um, every day, and while I have to manage that over long periods of time for all the different companies I've worked for, the challenge is that I look at it from a different perspective than perhaps you do. So what I thought was that I divide my talk into two parts. The first, I'll talk about how I, as chairman of Microsoft or as a CEO of some of the previous companies, how I've managed uncertainty. And I think uh, once I've shared that with you, which is perhaps more generic, more at a chief executive level, what I'd like to do is to talk about how you can perhaps embrace that in terms of what you do as project management professionals. Does that sound okay to you? So let's start. Okay. So let's talk about managing uncertainty in uncertain times. And I think I'd first like to share with you that this is going to be the new norm. If you think that, if you look at the world we're living in today, where volatility and uncertainty is becoming actually the new normal. Think about what has happened over the last, even just two years. The Arab Spring saw the change in government in countries like Tunisia, Egypt, Libya, and Yemen. Some of the most powerful countries in Europe are today facing bankruptcy. And one of the things which we had taken granted for the last 10 years is that the developing economies like Brazil and India and China and Russia were going to continue to, to, to grow at a much faster rate than the developed world is currently under threat 
and perhaps may not be uh, the norm going forward into the future. During this period, we've seen companies completely disappear, household names, uh, Kodak, uh, who led the, uh, the, uh, the move into digital cameras, is no longer there. Uh, HMV, the British entertainment uh, retailing company, is no longer in existence. And think about Borders, the bookstore, which doesn't exist anymore. And you think hope closer home to uh, in India, uh, we have companies, large companies in the airline sector. We had companies like Kingfisher. We had large companies in the telecom sector who made huge investments who no longer are here. And we are facing this uh, volatility and uncertainty and ambiguity and complexity every day in our lives. And I think um, I don't necessarily agree with the MC when he says that ambiguity is our destiny or ambiguity is what, you know, is, common, is, is, is as part of our nature. I think the challenge is that uh, it is the environment, it is uh, the changes which are taking place in technology, it is uh, all the changes which are taking place in people's aspirations, it's the changes which are taking place in our political and social and economic sector which creates that. So to me, the three key words is not just about uncertainty, it's volatility. Think about the exchange rate over the last couple of months, the way it's gone up and down and it's all a function of who says what and at what point of time. It's volatile. The whole economy is volatile. Our political system sometimes seems extremely volatile. You think about uncertainty. It's uncertainty is in every day in the environment in which we are in. And you know, Dino also talked about complexity. Uh, we have made things very complex. We tend to look at uh, you know, we, we lack trust in the way in which we deal with our people, whether it's a government to citizens or whether it is business to businesses or business to, to con consumers. India, we tend to have this uh, lack of trust due to which we create very, very complex systems which in the end fail because they just can't handle that huge volume of transactions. And then Dina also talked about ambiguity. Ambiguity how do you manage in times when you don't have all the answers? And again, I think as Indians, we tend to be extremely rational. We believe that if you don't have the complete answer, we don't have all the information, then we shouldn't move ahead. And therefore, a lot of uh, you know, uh, lack of progress is because of the ambiguity, the inability to have all the answers, and therefore we don't move ahead. So what have I learned in my last 35 to 36 years in working life? And I'd also like to share with you some of the examples from the company I currently represent, which is Microsoft. Microsoft, we've been in existence for nearly now four decades, and we have continued to grow to different generations of technology, from the personal computer, to client server, to the internet, and to the era of what we now call the era of um, personal computing. It's no longer about personal computers. It's an era of what we call about personal computing, which has multiple kinds of devices with which you can access information. And we've seen the move from what we call from software to services. And one of the things we've learned is that you can't have a different strategy for good times and for bad times. To be really managed, to be able to manage uncertainty, you need to have consistency in your ability to drive what you're planning to do. And you need to be able to do that day in and day out. The four areas which I think has helped Microsoft, and I also believe has helped me in terms of the way I manage the business, uh, which I'd like to share with you, which has helped in terms of uncertainty, is number one, living our culture and values. It's very important for you to understand that you know, culture plays an important role in bringing about a certain amount of permanence in what you're attempting to do. And anybody can copy your products, anybody can copy your pricing, but nobody can copy your culture. And that living the values which, you're, which is part of your culture has turned out to be extremely important for large corporations like Microsoft or Oracle. They have been extremely important in enabling us to bring about the changes which we wanted to do. Having the right culture, living that value, makes it possible for us to turn on a dime, 
to be able to get everybody to move towards a different strategy if required. So it's important for us to live our values, and the values of Microsoft are very, very simple. It's about integrity and honesty. It's about open, being open and respectful. It's about being passionate about technology, our customers, our partners. It's about having big, bold goals, uh, which we can you know, really go out and attempt and make happen. It's about being self-critical, and it's about holding ourselves accountable for what we do. It's also the second area which is, which is very critical and very important in managing volatility, uncertainty, uh, complexity, and ambiguity is being consistent, being committed, and trying to make sure that you're relevant to your employees, to your customers, and to your partners. From a Microsoft perspective, irrespective of how we fare in the market, one thing we have always believed in is innovation. And therefore, we spend or invest close to about nine and a half to $10 billion on creating the next generation of products. And we've done that recently, even in the, the best of years as well as in the worst of years. And what has, that has helped us to do is to completely reimagine how Microsoft looks at technology. And I will share some of those with you because then you will understand why it was important for us to maintain that course. We are also, one thing we have realized is that you have to adopt new business models. So if 12 months ago I was standing in front of you, I would have told you that Microsoft was a software company. Microsoft was investing in creating the next generation of software which would make or enable um, large numbers of users across different uh, industries to become more productive. But we've redefined our business because of the, what's changing, what has happened around the world. And we are now becoming what is called a devices and services company. So we're moving from being a software company to becoming a devices and services company because we've realized that what we are seeing in the marketplace, the consumerization of IT, the proliferation of devices, the continuous uh, you know, uh, improvement of Moore's law as computing becomes faster but much cheaper, that we have to become a different company. It's not just about software. Software has become services, and the software is now inside the devices, and it's a, therefore a devices and services story. So we had to reimagine exactly who we are. So in bad times of uncertainty, culture plays an important role being committed, trying to be relevant, and being persistent in terms of your strategy is also important. And therefore, innovation continues to be our lifeblood, but based on what has happened around us, we've had to change our strategy from the perspective of who we are as a company and redefined. The third area which has stood Microsoft in good stead, and which I believe is important for every multinational, is to invest in the country in which you operate. And I'm proud of the fact that Microsoft has a huge presence in India and has had a huge social impact. And that social impact is not just in terms of you know, the economic, but it is also in terms of what we do in education, what we've done for, uh, for helping uh, the um, unemployed to for gain, get gainful employment. The work which we are doing with governments to provide more transparency and to speed up the process of uh, e-governance. Uh, the work which we do from a, creating the new digital economy, the work which we do with various government agencies, educational institutions, and other industry leaders in making sure that our networks are secure and that we have the right kind of privacy policies. This is important because if we don't invest in that, then I think you know, the adoption of IT, the adoption of, um, of technology is going to be limited. So therefore, investing in the country is very, very critical. But the last area which I think I wanted to share with you before I quickly move on to what it means to you is that the fourth area where we have found or where I have also found that how do you manage uncertainty is through very, very precise execution. Execution is actually key to managing in uncertain or ambiguous times. And I'd like to quote from Percy Barnavik, who basically said that the strategies and designs, what he calls thinking, only gets you 5 to 10% of the way. 90% is in the execution. 
And this is, this is I think, key. It is the, it is the uh, intensity of the way in which you execute which is really very important. And if I compare Microsoft with my previous company, Sun uh, Microsystems, the difference really between the two was primarily in execution. Because if you think about um, a mic uh, Sun Microsystems, we had great technology, we had great innovation, we had great products, we had a strong culture, we invested heavily into technology, but the difference was in execution. Microsoft as a company is great on execution. So that, that execution is important. And that's where I think all of you come in. Because you, as project management professionals, for you that is really something which you have to do day in and day out. So what I wanted to share with you now is that what, and in, if you think about execution, technology plays an important role. A lot of you are perhaps part of the IT departments, some of you in other departments, but use technology every day. And technology is what is helping us to become more precise in the way in which we execute. And technology is changing. If you look at the world today and if you look at the way um, IT is being used by companies, it's going to dramatically change over the course of the next decade. I think that we are at what I call the cusp, where there are four big mega trends from a technology perspective which are happening. And it's interesting because in the past, there's typically been only one at a point of time. But today, there are four major trends which are all happening at the same time, which is going to have a dramatic impact on the kind of technology you're going to see in the marketplace, the kind of technology you're going to be using or already are using, and the way you can use it to deliver better results in terms of the way you execute on projects or, or on uh, any other kind of um, you know, activities. These four mega trends are around mobility, social, big data, and cloud. And what I'd like to do is to share with you what we mean by mega trends and what are happening. And what I'd like to do then to share with you the implications of these as far as project management is concerned. So let's look at mobility. If you thought about IT in the past, it was all about the information worker. It was about the office worker. It was about somebody behind the desk. But if you think about the way technology is being used today, it's ubiquitous. With connectivity being ubiquitous, you need access to information irrespective whether you're at work or at play. Your salespeople need access to information while they're in front of a customer. Your procurement people need information when they're in front of their vendors. And project managers need to be able to actually review their projects on site. So if you think about it, IT has to change because it's now possible to make access to information, the ability to, to collaborate much easier because of the proliferation of different kinds of devices, the advent of the mobile phone, the tablets, which enables mobility to be that much more. Applications are changing. They're becoming more like services, so, so that you can access, access information, information anytime, anytime, anywhere as a service. service. The, the second area is in the area of social. social. Now, all of you are using Facebook and Twitter. Twitter. These are means by which you can reach out to larger numbers of people. But think about social in the enterprise, the ability to go and ask for help, to share information transparently, even across employees to understand where, whom you can collaborate with, to get answers to questions which you didn't know where to go to earlier. That's what social can do. It can enable you to be able to share that information and to collaborate with stakeholders that much faster. And social is now being built into every enterprise application. It is being built into every kind of service which you will be seeing. The next one is big data. There's always been a lot of work done in terms of being able to access the transactions and the information which your organizations create and then being able to present it in different ways. But wouldn't it be great if you could take that data and correlate with external data, government data, social data, data from Twitter, data from various others, and then correlate the two? 
Just think about the kind of information which you can mine and how it can help implement or you know, enable you to take better decisions. That's what big data is about. And big data is also enabling what I call machine learning. Because of the stream of data which is coming from multiple different sources, devices are becoming a lot more intelligent. So that they can now think two steps ahead. The devices no longer are just something which you use, they're now becoming your helper. And they can do things two steps ahead of what you've already planned to do. And then what has enabled all of this to work together is the cloud. The cloud enables mobility, social, big data, and computing to happen in a ubiquitous manner, in a manner where uh, it can ac be accessed by millions of people across the globe. And it's about accessing information anytime, anywhere. The cloud has brought about a dramatic change in the cost of computing. It's made it possible for the, a, a person with a mobile phone to have at his command the computing power which previously was only available to very large corporations or to very large governments. And now all you can, you can access any of that with, with just a mobile phone. And therefore the possibilities in terms of what you can do with technology is endless. So it is these four mega trends, mobility, social, big data, and cloud, and the fact that they're all happening at the same time, which is creating a tremendous pressure on the technology sector. It's creating a huge churn in terms of the kinds of organizations which are in play. And it's also having a imp profound impact in the kinds of applications and services which uh, you know, IT companies and other organizations are providing. And it's having a tremendous impact on users because the companies which use these technologies are the ones who are going to have that strategic advantage going forward. The interesting thing also is that there's a whole new breed of applications which have been created which use all of these technologies. These are sometimes referred to as, as um, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, SMAP, social, mobile, um, analytical, and cloud, SMAC. So SMAC kinds of applications. These are applications which have all these three characteristics, all these four characteristics. They're delivered through the cloud. They have analytics built in. They're mobile, so it can be accessed by any kind of device. And they also have access to social. And one of such applications is really the uh, Microsoft um, Enterprise uh, project management uh, solution, uh, which is actually on demonstration outside. And I would strongly urge all of you to look at it because uh, the EPM suite of products from Microsoft is today uh, SMAP enabled, SMAC enabled. What I'd like to do is to quickly move on and talk about how these technologies are relevant from a project management perspective. And some of it I've alluded to when I described these technologies. But think about mobility. It gives you the ability to manage and monitor on the go with familiar connected tools. It increases your business agility because a lot of these applications can be served up on a mobile phone. You don't really need to carry a big clunky devices with you wherever you go. And it helps you to deliver connected and engaging experiences that excite your users. If you think about social, it enables a huge collaborative execution. And I think all of you as project managers know how important it is for you to reach out to your stakeholders who are directly involved, but perhaps a lot of the stakeholders who are not in the know of what's happening every day. It enables you to extend your service reach. It enables you to harvest greater knowledge. It uh, gives employees a choice. It reduces cost and simplifies management. It connects in real time, so on. So social is having a huge impact on, on how you can manage projects. And it's the same thing with, with big data. Big data enables you to get far greater insights in terms of what is happening. It enables you to use that information to move fast and to move quickly. And it's also about enables a, a broader adoption of, of um, uh, these technologies. 
And if you think about cloud, the ability to embrace the right IT for your business, uh, it makes it affordable, it makes more of your existing equipments, and it delights users with the best of experiences. So all these technologies are going to have a profound impact in terms of the way you used your software or you used your IT in the, part, in the past. The Microsoft EPM has been designed for the new era. It's based on big data, ability to integrate with big data, to pull in information from not just other parts of the organization, but also from external sources. It's mobile, so therefore you can access that information to any kind of device, whether it's a mobile phone, a tablet, a PC, a laptop, or any other kind of device. Uh, it uh, has a, a built-in unified communications, uh, what we call Link for enterprise, or even Skype for, for uh, outside of the enterprise, and Yammer, which is our social enterprise, which enables you, therefore, to bring about all the benefits of social into the application. And more important, we now have a version which is available uh, on the cloud. So you can have an in-premise and run it within your own organization, or you can take it from the cloud, uh, which uh, we manage and where we run across the globe. So I wanted to just sum up. I think managing uncertainty is going to be the new norm. We will continue to live in what I think Harish Munwani described at the last AGM, uh, Hindustan Nigar AGM, where he called, talk, called it VUCA. It's actually a US military term. VUCA stands for volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. Most of the speakers today have talked about that, and I'm sure that that's what you're going to hear. The ways in which you can manage uncertainty at least the four areas which I have found, which has really helped me, is one, is being ensuring that you live your values, you leverage the culture of your organization. As Peter Drucker said, uh, uh, culture trumps strategy any day, any time. Number two, you have to be very clear about what your strategy is, what you're committing to, what your investments are, and be persistent around that. Number three is you've got to invest in the country in which you go. That's what helps you to manage in the long term, and especially in times of uncertainty. And the fourth and the most important part, it's, it's all about execution. You've got to execute with precision, you've got to execute. And within the area of execution, IT plays a huge role. And IT is changing. The four mega trends, what I call SMAC, social mobility, analytical and uh, cloud, are going to have a profound impact in the way technology is going to look at everything, including project management. And the impact which SMAC will have on project management is huge. It will enable you to be able to really manage large, complex, ambiguous projects are much more easier because of what they deliver. So I want to thank you again. I'm really impressed, like I said, with the quality of the audience. I, I, I wish you a very successful uh, two days and the conference. And I look, to, look forward to seeing many more people joining your community. Thank you. I would uh, once again like to thank Mr. Bhaskar uh, for your thoughts and for your time. And and again, for your support from Microsoft. Thank you very much, sir. I would now like uh, Dina and Raj to present uh, Mr. Bhaskar with a memento of our appreciation. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much, Dina.